Hi everybody, welcome back to another CYT Crypto episode. My name is Stephen Aitchison and today we'll be going over the markets just as usual. We'll be looking at the main story about Venezuela um, being one of the first central banks to consider buying up Bitcoin to get past, well it's kind of, there's a lot of reasons for it, to kind of get past uh, US sanctions um, as well. It's amazing how many countries <laughs> have been sanctioned um, from the US as well. They have to be really careful just now. But as we're going to be talking about today, as ever, if you could go down to like button and crush those likes, that would be fantastic. Um, and it's Friday today as well. I know Bitcoin has gone down, it's, it doesn't look like a good day, but I think that good things are coming. Okay, we'll just see if we're live or not. I know I, um, I just gave a, a couple of minutes notice there in the kind of groups, group chat, but we'll just see if we're live, make sure everything is okay. Oh. Uh, you might have to change your settings as well um, because it looks as if it's a, a dodgy kind of connection. Um, right, we are live. And how many people have got? We've got a couple of people in just now, so I'm just going to jump over at the moment. Okay. We have um, oh, a five euro donation from Nulls Bill. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that, mate. Um, right, okay, we'll just see who's in. Honest Crypto Journey is in the house. David D is back with us. Good to see you. Um, Crypto Knowledge Alliance, our very own Crypto Knowledge Alliance. Jimbo is in the house. Um, so good to see you back here, Jimbo. Nice to see you on the live. Um, Jason Clayton has joined us. And BitMaker92 um, is in. I don't think I've seen you here before. So welcome to the channel. Mad Maximus is here as well. I don't think I've seen you in the channel as well. Mitch Dieter has joined us as well. And I'll just see if we're. All right, excellent connection. That's good because it's saying there wasn't a good connection before, but now we have a good connection. So always good. g is in the house. Ross Davidson has joined us. Uh, only Zimbabwean in the house, possibly. Um, London Bobby is in as well. Uh, good to see you here back with us. Right, so we'll just go over the markets. Markets are down, obviously. We know Bitcoin is down just now. It dipped below $8,000. We're going to take a look at the chart as well. It did below the, uh, an important um, line as well, the $200 moving average. $200, the 200 day moving average uh, did below that as well. So not a good sign, but kind of bounced up from there as well, So which is quite good. So we'll take a look at the charts later on. But Bitcoin down to $8,087. It did go down to $7,700, but bounced back up again from those levels. Market capitalization, $213 billion, which is shocking. Um, Bitcoin dominance, 67.9%. Who's the winners and losers? Synthetics Network Token is up 14%. Dragon Coins is up 12.29%. Um, so that's jumped into top 100 Dragon Coins. We've seen that a couple of times now. On low volume, admittedly, but it's still jumped up into top 100. And um, that's only two in double digit greens. And the greens we have around, I'm trying to take out the stable coins, probably have around 20% in the green, but just, just in the green as well. And the reds we have Cryptarium, which has gone up a lot um, since Tika Tawari kind of announced it as one of his five coins. Um, it went up uh, a couple hundred percent, I think. Um, but it's down 13% today. Bitcoin Diamond down 10% um, as well, only two in double digit reds, but we've got about 80% in the red as well. Okay, this is all the tokens listed on CoinMarketCap. And we now have 2,902. It's gone up three since yesterday. Who has got 100 percenters? I'll just have a wee look. Yes, we have. We've only got one. Advanced Internet Blocks is up 209% over the last 24 hours. Only on 45,000 volume, but that is okay. It's only got a market cap of 247,000. So we'll take a look at that. As ever, we're always looking for hidden gems. This is why we look at this as well. This is just one, one way of looking for hidden gems. Um, Italian Lira. Interesting. Um, I don't know if that's anything to do with uh, a sovereign coin from... And it's just governed. I don't think it will be. I don't think it will be sanctioned by the Italian government. But it's up 91%. 
So I don't know actually, I'm just going to have to check that out. Free coin up 89%. Circulating supply 8.7 trillion. Hmm. Uh, Vouch for me is up 86%. That's one I've heard since ICO. Probably lost about $10,000 on it or something. But it's up 86%. And um, what else has done well? Elecoin. Elecoin uh, on 500,000 volume, which is good. 1.8 million market cap. Um, up 74%, but 154% on the week as well. What's done well over the week? I've seen this yesterday. Custody token up 609% on the week. Dream token up 236% on the week. Very low volume, right enough. Um, Ether Zero. On 31 million volume, don't know if that's quite correct, but up 202% on the week as well. Rally is up 191%. Ella, just seen HDAC um, on 5.5 million volume, 118% it's up on the week. We don't know the market cap of that. Okay, we'll look at crypto bubbles. What's been happening in crypto bubble world? And we'll go over the last 24 hours. Mostly in the red, we can see here in crypto bubbles. We've seen this on the charts, but it's always good to look at visually. Um, Synthetics Network token, we've just seen that as well. That's one of the big ones. I'll go down again. BTS, uh, bit shares up 5% over the last 24 hours, but nothing else to really speak about. Um, Compound die, I'm just keeping an eye on that. Just now it is up. Um, Bitcoin down 16%. So that's, that's a strange one because it's up and down just now, Bitcoin. I don't know why. And what's going on with it? Down 81% on the year. Uh, we'll just go over the last hour. What's happening over the last hour? Much better, much more healthier. Greens all around. Bitcoin down 10%. What's going on with Bitcoin? It's just really up and down just now. Ravencoin up 4% on the hour. There's not any big ones standing out. SNT is up 5%. About it. Just let, have a look. I don't think it'll be changed much in Bitcoin value. More dreads and Satoshi value. And go over the last 24 hours for BTC. Stronger greens. So it's eh, kind of looking okay. It's not, it's just going sideways, really. That's really what's happening just now. The, the alts market is just kind of st not stopped. Uh, it's still going. There's loads of opportunities out there, as we'll see on kind of, um, Binance and KuCoin. Fear and Greed Index. I thought this would have been lower, actually. I thought there would have been extreme. Well, there is extreme fear here. It was down to 12 yesterday. Last week it was at 37. And today it's at 24. It's showing extreme fear um, here. So extreme fear, a lot of people are selling off. Obviously, they're really frightened. And this is obviously... And um, the fear and greed index is um, social media as well, Talk, looking at the social media interactions and seeing what the words are um, as well around that. And there's this extreme fear here as well. But it's gone up since yesterday, so this is a sentiment. Uh, we, we've had a low of five for the uh, sentiment, which was a couple of weeks ago. <clears throat> and usually after that, a couple of months after that, after we have an extreme low like that, it's gone up, uh, I showed you that in another video, it's gone up by over 100 to 200% the Bitcoin price. So are we going to see that again? We'll need to wait and see kind of what happens with that. So that's the fear and greed index. We'll just go back to chat, see who else has joined us, if anybody. We have the Hawthorns has joined us, Mervyn Skidmore is in, Pete Van Den Wright is in, I'll get to the comments in a second. Crypto Dread is in, Marcus Jafari, um, Mervyn Skidmore, I've said... Tony P has joined us. Good to see you back. Um, Mike D, one of our brown admins, is in the house as well. Um, B is in the house. Fighting with marmalade lid. Yeah, I'm getting old. <laughs> um, Tim Gash is in the house as well. Good to see you back, Tim. Um, it has been a while. Everything is good. Everything is good with me. It's, it's not really good in the markets, but it could get better. Well, it is going to get better. This is um, I'm re extremely positive, even more positive now that I've seen the kind of news stories um, out and looking deeper into kind of Wall Street and stuff, what they're doing, the repo markets, um, student crisis, um, debt, the student debt crisis as well. Um, so I'll be looking at that as well, and I'm even more 
even more kind of confident about the future of Bitcoin as well. Um, all right, I'm just going to call the comments. Honest Crypto Journey, first comment winner. Uh, and oh, Sogla, what is Sogla, Jimbo? Sogla. Uh, you win a bag of BitConnect. <laughs> Honest Crypto Journey, a £4.99 donation. Thank you very much. I'm away tomorrow to south of France to an art school for 10 days. Well done. Uh, well deserved break, much needed. Just want to wish you all a great week ahead. Oh, brilliant. That's brilliant, Stuart. I hope you have a brilliant time. To an art school. That sounds idyllic, to be honest. South of France as well. You'll still get the weather in the south of France um, just now, which is really good. Ah, that sounds really interesting. So what is it? Painting in? Is it acrylics? Is it oils? Is it... Um, be interesting to see, to see that. But, oh, that's brilliant. Thank you very much for the donation. Really appreciate that. Uh, still going through the comments. Uh, did it? Good days. So I'll be heading down from here with Bitcoin. It looks very much like it. We're going to look at the charts just now. Uh, Ada, is Sherry Testnet actually pushing up the price a little bit? And um, we're going to be looking at that um, as well. Thanks for the reassuring info on HL SIP, Steve. My pleasure, Tony. Uh, my pleasure, because it was you that kind of put us on to uh, the SIP as well. So it's the least I can do just to keep you up to date as well. Yeah, I phoned up um, Hargreaves Lansdowne. And actually spoke, <laughs> put me through to three different departments. Um, spoke to them and they said uh, everything is okay as long as um, we're in before the, the actual ban, then we should be okay. But um, I also asked about the insurance, if we're covered by insurance um, as well. Because on this particular SIP, on this particular product we've got, we're not really covered. To it. So if the company, um, there's something happened with the company, then we're not really covered. However, if it's financial irregularities, then we are covered. We just have to be careful. But it's the same with any pension fund, to be honest. You're putting a risk, putting your money into a pension fund. Um, you, see, you know what's happened over the last kind of 10, 15 years with pension funds. Um, so it's a risk, always a risk. Um, Cardano, Shelly, Testnet live today. Yes, staking on the Testnet, carry on a real blockchain. Need to work out how to set up Node, uh, Mad Maximus. Um, saying that. So it's, inter it's going to be interesting to see what happens with this. So Sherry Testnet is live. So remember it's a Testnet, it's not the kind of main one, but this is still a big thing for Cardano. But this is what they've been working up to for ages. Um, B is saying, Art School Top Man, High Queens Drifter is in. Um, Doru Torita is in. I'm starting to accumulate gain now. BTC Ada Tron. Excellent. And David D, awesome. Honest Crypto Journal will be painting by crypto numbers until you return. <laughs> um, oil landscapes, been painting for years, but got a chance to study with an artist I respect. We are excited. Excellent. That's brilliant. That sounds amazing, that. Oil landscape. You need to show some, some of them. Send them over. We can show them on the channel. And if you didn't know, Honest Crypto Journal has got his own channel, his own YouTube channel as well. Um, I don't know if you've been, I've never seen a video of late, um, Stuart, but I know you put up videos there. There was a really good one the last time that I'd seen when you were just talking candidly about your kind of thoughts for the future. So you can click on Honest Crypto Journey's name. Same with Crypto Knowledge Alliance. I know you've got one as well, Jimbo. I don't know if you're still doing it or what your plans are, but I'll give you a shout out anyway for your kind of channel as well. Always like to support our members as well on the part of the CYT crypto crew as well. Tim Gash uh, just put more into in my AJ Bell sip this morning. Now I'm DCing my pension. <laughs> I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. Uh, I I put it in when it was twelve thousand dollars for Bitcoin, about one point one seven to twelve thousand dollars. But I do not give a jot. I, I don't care a jot to be honest, because I know it's going to go up in the future. It's, it's for the next five years. It's not for the next couple of months or something. Right. We'll go on to the Bitcoin chart, first of all. We're, we're bouncing back. We can see this yellow line here. I don't usually have this. We can see this yellow line here. This is a 200 moving average. Now, this is important because this is what a lot of traders use. A lot of traders are using this. They use the 50 and the 200 MA. So we have to look at it. Even though I've got a different system, I still have to look at it. I still have to know about it. You can only go kind of rogue if you know about the systems in place already. Um, so this is a 200 day moving average because we're on a daily um, or the 200 period moving average um, there. 
and it kind of dipped below that and it's still below just now which doesn't bode well for the Bitcoin price it doesn't bode well at all if we put in 50 we'll take out the EMAs just now and we'll put in the 50 so this is the 50 EMA this is a moving average um, which is different from the EMA which is the exponential moving average the exponential moving average um, takes more into consideration the recent prices and not just the average of all the prices um, so it puts more weight on the recent prices. So there's a slight difference, not that much to be honest. But there's no death cross here. Um, there was a golden cross here, the 50 EMA and the 22nd of April. So that crossed over, um, which everybody was really happy about when it crossed over around about 4,500. Is there going to be a death cross? It could be a death cross whereby the 50 EMA crosses down over the 200 EMA. So we're going to have to wait and see if that happens, but that would have to happen for a period of days for Bitcoin to go down. But it could uh, go down sharply again. So we're below the 200 MA just now. It's trying to fight back, and we've got this $8,000 psychological barrier um, here, which we spoke about yesterday. It bounced perfectly off that um, as well, bounced back up. Um, or it's on that just now. It's just been held up from that 8,000. I don't think it's going to hold. I think, well, it feels as if we're going to go down further uh, than this. So 7,600 would be the next obvious one. And we'll go to here. About 7,600 would be one, but it did get down to 7,700 and bounced. Um, so 7,600 and then we're all the way down. It could be all the way down. There's not real support there. 7,000 would be a psychological barrier. And you're talking into the 5,000s. So 6,000 obviously, um, a psychological barrier as well. And 7,000. So it's looking as if we are going to go down further. And the RSI is the lowest it's been for nearly a year. Uh, I think the lowest, yeah. Back in December, November, December time. Last year it was round about 8 as lowest, or 9.27. And this is the relative strength index. We're up to round about 19 or 20 just now. So that's the lowest it's been. So really what it's saying is oversold, but it can stay in oversold territory for quite a while. We can see back here on the 14th of November, November it lasted. It went below the, the 25, I think I've got it set here. So 25, I'm just going to see the RSI where we're set. Settings, inputs, length 14, 1730, so I've got it set at 30, the lower band, we'll set that at 20, and I'm going to set the upper band at 80. So we're dead on that 20 just now, we can go lower than that obviously, and we stayed in below the 20 from the 13th of November, for two weeks, for a couple of weeks. So we could stay here for a couple of weeks or we could bounce right up from here um, as well. So we need to see, so it's not a good thing, but it's just into oversold territory just now, well oversold territory. So in theory, we should get a bounce from here. However, it doesn't always happen and I don't think that is gonna happen just now because we've gone below this 200 ME, which is a big, kind of trigger signal for your average trader. So we'll get rid of the EMAs just now. We won't get rid of the 200 EMA. I'll put the EMAs back in. So the EMAs we should have sold back at 10,200. Uh, 10, um, we should have sold $10,200. We should have sold and still been out, i.e. gone short here or sold at 10,200 uh, if we were in it big time. Uh, and would still be short just now. So it looks as if Bitcoin is going to go down, I'm afraid. It doesn't seem to be affecting the alts that much. Obviously, the alts are coming down. With it, the major alts are coming down. We'll look at Ethereum and um, BTC. We're going to look at the BTC price because the dollar price is only because the, the dollar price of Bitcoin has gone down. So Ethereum bounced off the 50 EMA there um, at 2.07 million. Satoshi. So it's actually doing 
better than Bitcoin, obviously. I'm just going to get rid of this RSI. In fact, I'll just blank it out altogether so we've got more of a chart. So that's doing well. XRP, BTC up as well, 3029. And Cardano, BTC as well as trying to get back up 478 so it's bounced off 436 and coming back as I was trying to get up the 70 EMA crossing over the 50 EMA and Litecoin what's that doing and um, that's a 690,000 that's the lowest has been for what's well, come down to its lowest point that's been for a while So this is in Satoshi value, obviously, and we've got the yellow line as a 200 MA, so don't get confused by that and take that out just now. Uh, we need the EMA there. And we'll get rid of this line, just so as not to get confused, but it looks as if everything is kind of coming down just now. And um, we're going to go to some of the, the world markets and see what's happening. We can see here, <laughs> it's unbelievable, it's still going up. And um, the FTSE 100 is going up just now, we're at 7,414. There's an underlying crisis, a major crisis going on just now. Um, and the markets are still going up. Obviously, the Feds have pumped in over $100 billion uh, last week into the markets. The repo markets have just gone mental just now because the interest rates have gone up for the repo markets. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a wee second as well. The Dow Jones, 26,891. So I think we're going to have a sharp, sharp drop over the coming months for the Dow Jones, for the UK, well, for all the major stock markets. The DAX is up as well. That's a European German market. So it's interesting to look at that. What's the price of gold just now? It's holding steady at $1,400.99. It came down a wee bit, um, but it's holding steady at the moment. This is the futures market as well, the CME futures market. You'll notice in the futures market, we talked about gaps the other day and I explained about what gaps were. We've, uh, we've actually got a gap that's not been filled around about the 12,000 and the 11,800 mark. So that's still not been filled. And remember, psychologically, it uh, opens up a loop. That loop has not been closed yet. So that's that's interesting, if you believe in the um, kind of gaps and the CME gaps and stuff like that. Okay, we'll just dive back before we go on to the main topic. Um, been hectic, unfortunately, so I had uh, not much chance to post this week. Oh, no problem. I just wanted, to, obviously, you've still got the channel there and there's still good videos there. So I think um, the kind of channel, what you've got, the, the last video that you've done is kind of timeless anyway. Um, so it's not dependent on kind of Bitcoin price or anything like that. You're just talking openly. So that's why it was such a good one. Um, Pete Van Den Wright as well. Should I wait to buy, Steve? I'm thinking so. I really want to buy some Ethereum, Cardano and XRP. I'm worried to buy now, though, as I'm saying it's a big drop off possible. I think if you're looking to buy... What I would do and wait and see um, is really, I think I said this um, yesterday, Pete, and BTC, USD, but I would wait at least, at least look at the 15 minute chart on Bitcoin. Look at the 15 minute chart and wait on the 7 EMA crossing over the 50 EMA before you even think about buying either Bitcoin or any of the others as well. If Bitcoin goes up, obviously, I would imagine the major alts will go up unless they kind of shoot up, unless Bitcoin shoots up to $10,000 again, then you're going to get the drop off in the alts again. Uh, it's only when Bitcoin is relatively steady or going up steady or going down steady um, that the alts start to really come up. From what I've observed, observed, uh, just get rid of that. So it's not crossed over yet. You can see... We had to cross down at $8,406. That was one of the 15-minute ones. The major one was here, obviously, at 9745 Probably below that because it didn't cross over. So it was about 10000 Crossed all the way down and 
didn't cross again until 8,400. So at least look at the 15 minute chart, but more than likely I'd probably go for the hourly chart. If you're looking short term, and that crossed down at 10,146 and it's not a buy just now. So if you're thinking about buying any of these, um, I would kind of tend to wait. If you're thinking about buying Bitcoin, I would wait until the hourly cross is over. If you're thinking about buying Ethereum, Ethereum, BTC, because obviously you have to buy Bitcoin first before you get that. So that's crossed up over on the hour. So is it going to be a resurgence of Ethereum, XRP, Litecoin, Cardano? So I would look at the hour as well, and it's crossed over on the hour. So it might be, might be that's a good time. It might be that's going to buck the trend. But I suspect, I suspect, if Bitcoin does go down big time, I don't think these are going to hold. But according to the charts, then it is it is actually holding despite what's happening with the Bitcoin price. So it might be a good time to look at Ethereum, and you said Cardano as well. I don't think Cardano, but it might have crossed over. Yeah, that did cross over at 463. So it could be a good time to actually get in because it's gone up despite the Bitcoin price. But I do suspect if Bitcoin does fall further down to 7,600, then 7,000, then 6,000, you're going to get a drop off in all these as well. But just look at the charts. That's what I would do, Pete. Um, David D, people on right, break your buy into two or four increments if you're unsure in DC up or down. If you believe in those coins long term, don't worry about potential small drop. That's it, exactly. That's exactly what we were saying yesterday as well. If, um, oh, it's jumped up again. Cardano is just going up to 480. Uh, if you kind of look at the macro view, look at the macro view just now. If you genuinely believe in Cardano long term, this is a brilliant time to buy. A couple of Satoshis here and there, it's not going to make a difference. And you can see we're at the bottom, this is on weekly chart, we're at the bottom nearly for Cardano 400, 406 Satoshi. And we're talking about the all time there, or all time since it's been on Binance. What else has it been on? BTC. Bitrex, is that longer time scale? September, going back to September. We were down at a low of 204. So we need its all-time low, Cardano. So a couple of Satoshis here and there, not going to make a difference in the long term. If you really believe in it, we're going to get back up to here at least 1,700. Then there at 3,874, which you're talking about 10x from here, and then back up to here, 6,257, which is 15x from here. If you believe in it long term, just dollar cost average in. If it goes down a wee bit more, buy some more. If it goes up a wee bit more, buy some more. That's, so I would say that, but if you're looking short term and you're looking for an entry point, then look at your hourly charts and it's crossed over on the hourly. And look at your four hourly as well if you're really, if you're a little bit more cautious or even the daily um, to get back in. Um, David D, thanks mate. Yeah, that's the general plan. I stagger to buy in 20% unless we get a huge drop in Bitcoin, then I'll sit back. Yeah, I think that's a good Good idea to do that. Okay, Venezuela. Venezuelan central bank is considering holding Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now, have some of the banks just now already got Bitcoin and Ethereum and, and XRP and Litecoin and Cardano? Have they got that? I would imagine they have um, kind of Bitcoin and Ethereum. That's the two biggest ones, obviously. Um, I would imagine some of the central banks do have that already, although it's not out in the open. Uh, I think maybe 10 years down the line, it'll come to light that the banks have been buying all along, um, but it's not out in the open. This is the first time that this has been out in the open. So Venezuela's central bank is exploring the possibilities of holding Bitcoin and Ether in its coffers, according to anonymous sources who reportedly have direct, direct insights into the matter. So this was according to Bloomberg. Bloomberg have got more details on this. And according to four people, um, independent Kind of separately, they've kind of come and they've kind of said that they're going to um, hold Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, so the efforts, uh, yeah, according to four people with direct knowledge of the matter, the efforts come at the behest of state-run uh, Petrolas de Venezuela SA, which is PDMVSA, which is seeking to send Bitcoin and Ethereum to the central bank and have the monetary authority pay the oil company suppliers with the tokens. According to the people who 
uh, have been asked, obviously, for obvious reasons not to be identified. Staffers are also studying proposals that would allow cryptocurrencies to be counted toward international reserves, now near a three-decade low of 7.9 billion. So that's what Venezuela have got in the coffers just now, only 7.9 billion um, as reserves for the country. So this is a way to get around US sanctions. So US sanctions against Nicolas and Maduro's authoritarian uh, regime have largely isolated Venezuela from the global financial system, exacerbating one of the world's most severe economic crises and forcing officials to use a patchwork of methods to move money around. So they're considering holding kind of Bitcoin and Ethereum as the reserves are kind of plummeting just now. Um, so they did have $22 billion. They've now got $7 billion in the coffers. So it isn't clear how PDVSA came to own Bitcoin and Ethereum or the value of its holdings, but the oil producers struggled to get paid by customers via conventional channels because major banks are hesitant to do business with a sanctioned entity. And last month, the company received almost 700 million payment in Chinese yuan after the party struggled to find financial institutions that would facilitate the transaction. So <clears throat> this is good. This is good for Bitcoin. Uh, I think there's going to be more and more um, central banks come out and say, yep, yeah, we're holding Bitcoin just as a hedge. Uh, not even as a hedge, just um, just as a way to kind of facilitate future growth probably um, as well. But I would imagine they'll kind of use it as a hedge as well. And I would imagine they'll be buying up just now, but it's not going to come to light. However, I think more and more central banks are going to come out. Obviously, you could have central banks that have their own coins as well. I don't think that's going to happen as much um, as it was. Um, that's the CBDC, um, CBDCs. Um, so I don't think that's going to happen, but I do think it's going to come out um, in the long run that a lot of the central banks do hold um, cryptocurrencies, or a lot of the banks hold cryptocurrencies. And I think it's going to happen more and more. Now, I think what we're going to get here, because Venezuela has obviously admitted to it, but Venezuela's got US sanctions against it, and it's unbelievable how many countries have got U.S. sanctions against it or people from different countries have got U.S. sanctions. As a way to circumvent or circumnavigate these kind of U.S. sanctions, a lot more countries, I think, are going to get into um, kind of crypto, especially Bitcoin, possibly Ethereum as well. That's why Ethereum, I think, is just going to jump up. It's another reason why I think Ethereum is going to jump up as well. Um because a lot of people are going to be thinking Bitcoin is too pricey. When it goes up to 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, they're going to look at the next one, which is obviously Ethereum, which still has a, a brilliant use case. Um, it's been really used for DeFi, so I think Ethereum is a good one to hold as well. So, yes, I do think more and more countries are going to come out or more and more central banks are going to come out. When that, There's going to be a domino effect, I think, is going to happen here. So the domino effect um, whereby one major central bank Venezuela is a major central bank, obviously, um, to say we're, we're thinking about holding kind of Bitcoin because it's been sent Bitcoin and Ethereum. They're thinking about holding it. It's a major one, but it's under US sanctions just now, so it won't be considered a major one at the moment. However, I think this, there's going to be a spotlight on this as well to see what happens. And then other banks are going to come out and say, yeah, we've got Bitcoin or yeah, we've got Ethereum or whatever. And then there's going to be a domino effect and more and more banks, more and more central banks, more and more countries are going to get into Bitcoin. That's when you're going to see a huge rise as well, as well as the institutions get in. Institutions will be looking at this as well and thinking, well, if Venezuela are going to get in, what have they got to lose, Venezuela? If they just say, okay, we've got 7.9 billion reserves, why don't we stick a billion of that in Bitcoin? If it goes up in price, if it went up 10x from there, instead of having 1 billion, they've got 10 billion extra that they didn't have before. The country is in a crisis anyway. Uh, I don't think they would do that, but it could do something like that. So it's going to be interesting over the coming months and years to watch um, what countries, what central banks have got Bitcoin and where the price of Bitcoin is going to go. Uh, so this is why I'm extremely bullish for Bitcoin as well, not just because of this, because of the crisis, the underlying crisis that's happening just now. Um, with the, the student debt, it's going to be a huge thing. Um, it's $1.5 million dollars in student debt in the US just now, and I think it's about 500 billion pounds in Britain alone with student debt in England alone. So if you include Scotland, Northern Ireland, um, and Wales in that, you're probably talking about 600 billion, uh, 600 billion pounds 
in student debt alone. Then you've got the repo crisis that's going on as well. The repo crisis happened kind of this week as well. Wall Street kind of reported on that. Or um, basically what they do, central banks borrow money, even sometimes just for overnight money. Um, and they kind of pay it back. If they need a kind of short-term loan, um, they'll borrow um, from other big institutions, major institutions, um, at a rate of about 2.2%. And they just give it back the next again day. It's just a short-term loan. But there's over a trillion dollars that happen um, kind of on a daily basis that kind of flows through the kind of repo um, loans market. But usually it's about 2.2%, but shot up to 6% um, the other day. So there's a bit of a kind of story come out about the, the repo kind of loans um, coming out and how there was a shortfall and it could spark a major crisis. Um, but obviously that's since come down a wee bit. But things like that, this is what the banks are doing. They're borrowing billions and billions of pounds and billions and billions of euros and billions and billions of dollars overnight. And then suddenly it goes up to 6%. So they can't pay or they're just, there's no repo market there. What they're going to do to, this is what sparks a crisis. And it's the banks that are doing this to us. They're doing shit with our money. Um, because our money that we put in the bank is not really our money. They're giving out to other people and lending it to other big institutions. And if there's a, if there's a big, huge crisis, who are the ones that are going to suffer? We're going to suffer because we have to pay it back in tax and everything else. There's loads of stuff going on under underneath the kind of whole system just now. And this is why I'm laughing at the kind of stock markets being these prices just now. The kind of FTSE 100, the Dow Jones, the DAX, just all the major kind of stock markets, once all this gets out, the student loans, the repos, the kind of mortgages, again, I think there's going to be, it's just so much happening, it's unbelievable. And you just go, it's just the timing for this, because I keep thinking, okay, I'm going to do a major short. If I can gather, get money and do a major short, if you've done a £100 a point, and this is, if you've done a £100 a point to short the kind of Dow Jones or to short, I wouldn't short the Dow Jones because it's up to, um, 27,000, so you'd have to put more money down. But um, the UK 100, the first 100, if you were to short that at the right time and just do £100 a point, you'd have to put about £10,000 deposit down. Um, but if you've done £100 a point and shorted that, essentially for every 10 points it goes down, you get £1,000. Every 100 points it goes down, you get £10,000. Every 1,000 points it goes down, you get £100,000. So if it went down by 1,000 points, which is going to at some point, it's just obviously not the right time just now, then you've got £100,000 tax-free. So it's totally tax-free. If you can manage to do that, if you can manage to time it right, and if you've got the balls to kind of put £10,000 down or £15,000, £20,000, I keep thinking about it, it's in the back of my mind all the time, but it'd be a huge, huge risk. Um, but it's getting the time, and it's coming. It is going to come, this 1,000-point um, drop in the Pussy 100, or even a 2,000 point drop. Um, we've seen it, seen it before and I'm sure we'll see it again. We were up to 6,792. We dropped to 3,467. This is back in 2008, 2009. The crisis happened. So that's a, a drop. Oh, put that there. Get that rid of that. A drop of 50%. So if you've done that and you put £100 a point on that kind of drop again, and you'd have £300,000 tax-free if you manage to short from 6700 um, to 3400 at £100 a point. That'd be £300,000 tax-free. Uh, and this is um, using something like IG. Oh, it used to be called IG Index, I think it's just IG now. So this is spread betting. And it is... A risk it is a gamble, but if you're playing it at the right time, it could it could work out. It could work and with Brexit, everything that's going on with Brexit, just now <laughs> it's just a joke. Um UK is just becoming a joke just now. But everything that's going on with Brexit and the politics around it, it's just an absolute joke what's happening around the world. So let me know what you think. I know I've kind of gone on a bit about kind of Venezuela, the central banks, etc., and what's happening underlying. But all this bodes well for the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency markets. Now, don't get me wrong. If the financial markets do kind of drop significantly, 
if the financial you're obviously going to get a drop in crypto as well. However, I think that's when there's going to be a new transference over from the fiat system to cryptocurrency system. I think we're going to have a transference um, there. Um, and I think that's that's how it's going to come about because of the, the underlying crisis that's going on at the moment that nobody... Well, we can see it. We can, can, we've been speaking about it for ages, um, but it's not really being reported about in the media and on the news. But things are coming out. Deutsche Bank, um, things are coming out that we're going to have we're going to have banks falling soon as well. I really do think things are happening. Anyway, that's my stuff. Right. David D, the current Venezuelan government is like rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic while the ship slows things. It is. It really is. So they're kind of grasping at straws just now. They really are grasping at straws. And obviously Bitcoin is one of them. It's a great BTC story, but Venezuela has no impact or credibility in the financial space. Well, it does because countries are going to be, other countries, other central banks are going to be looking at it to see how it deals with this. If they do kind of buy Bitcoin. So I kind of agree with you in some points that they are kind of sinking ship just now because of US sanctions, but a way to um, circumnavigate these kind of US sanctions could be Bitcoin. And it could be a brilliant story for Venezuela. It could be a brilliant story. So rest assured, there's going to be a lot of eyes on Venezuela and what they're kind of doing with Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general. Um, so I think a lot of people are going to be paying attention. If they see even signs of this working out for them, then they're going to jump on it. They'll definitely jump on it and just say, okay, we need to get some Bitcoin. This is what Venezuela have done. We need to... But there's more things that we're not seeing as well with Venezuela. But 7.9 billion they've only got in reserves, and that's dwindling fast as well. David D, perhaps more central banks in time, but that's natural evolution. Uh, we'll still see global regulatory clarity and adoption of FATF regular um, regulation guidelines implemented. Of course you will. Of course you're going to see that. However, what they're going to do before that, before the before regulation comes in place, uh, into place from FATF, etc., and all those regulatory bodies, and um, before that comes in place, the banks are going to they're not going to say, okay, we'll wait until all the regulations come in, which will take years. They're going to buy the Bitcoin just now, or they're going to buy Bitcoin and just say, okay, if they do, once we do get regulated, we've got all these stacks of Bitcoin that we have. So they're going to start, and I think they still think it's going to come out that central banks are buying up Bitcoin just now, uh, or will be buying up Bitcoin soon. Um, so they have to do that. For the, all the regulations to come into play, it's going to take years. It's not going to happen overnight, so they'll need to start buying soon as well. Um, be exactly what I'm waiting for, another Wall Street crash. Mega money would pour into cryptocurrency. I do think that as well. I think there'll still be a crash in the crypto market as well until people get their heads around, okay, what, what do we do here? And then they'll, they'll start seeing cryptocurrency as a viable alternative. If Venezuela moves reserves into BTC, the US will tank BTC if necessary. That's my only worry as well. So if Venezuela and kind of other countries start to say, okay, we're moving to BTC, we don't need your kind of the US dollar, we don't need, um, we don't care about US sanctions because we're going to um, kind of cryptocurrency or BTC, then that's when I think the kind of USA will say, okay, we're going to ban Bitcoin um, for all its citizens. And I think that would crash the crypto market initially, but then it would come back up again and the US would be locked out. So the US would be cutting off their noses despite their faces if they did that. I don't think they'll see that. I don't think they'll see it that way at the moment. They'll see it as a short-term solution to getting um, these countries like Venezuela um, to stop trading altogether. They just won't the the imposing these financial kind of sanctions on them all over the place. This is why the country's gone down so much. But I think they'd be cutting off their noses to spite their face it and they'd fall way behind uh, in the world um just now. They're kind of starting to fall just now. Um but it seems the whole world is falling just now. Europe, kind of Britain, USA, just the whole world is kind of starting to sink at the moment. It's not doomsday, but it's all because of the banks. It's all because of the banks and the governments and the shitty systems have gone in place. This is why we need Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. That's my belief. Um, what else was I going to say? Yeah, I told you, showed you the kind of Bloomberg as well. This was about the repo markets. Wall Street is buzzing about repo rates. Here's why. So it did shot up on Monday to 6.01% when it was down at just over 2%. 
Um, and just say the rates have been coming down for a while. Since 2018, the Fed has been shrinking its holdings of bonds and reversing its um, crisis era policy of pushing money into the financial system. But we've just seen they pushed about $100 billion in as well. There's a crisis happening just now. That's underlying. There's a crisis happening just now all around the world in USA. Um, and that's going to have a knock-on effect in Europe. But there's a Europe crisis happening just now as well. Um, lots of separate countries, but as a whole, plus the UK as well. Um, this is about the, the LIBOR as well and the federal fund rate as well. It's just digging deeper into it. Okay, I think I'll leave it there just now, being a bit of a rant. You think the world is going to end, but it's not. It's just a good thing for Bitcoin. I think it's a good thing for Bitcoin. Uh, I'll just have a look at Bitcoin again. One last look. BTC, USD. Oh, we didn't look at the markets as well. And that's a weekly. On the daily. So it's trying to come back up. It's 8,094. That's good if it can bounce off the 8,000 level. But the next level um, below that is 7,600. And then we've got resistance there, obviously, of 8,800. So we might trade in a channel between 8,000 and 8,800 or more likely scenario I think is going to fall further. That's a more likely scenario, especially coming over the weekend as well, where traditionally um, Bitcoin does go down in price over the weekend. We're just going to have a look at Binance, see what uh, Binance is doing. Band is up 20%. That's one of the ones that was um, recently listed. <coughs> Go to the four hour chart on that. It's coming off a bottom there of 5,303 and jumping up just now. And Breaker is up 17% as well. GTO on the volume, volume is still good on volume. And GTO is up 15%. POA, I think I called that the other day. Is up 15% and up to 207. Was it POE called or POE? I can't remember. So there's still quite a few. There's a quite a few pages on Binance. Doing well. We'll look at KuCoin as well. So MVP is up 24% on little volume though. There's very little volume on an MVP. 0.21 um, Bitcoin over the last 24 hours. Still up 24%. Open is up 20%. SNX is up 19%. XYO. Um, J8T is up as well on very little volume. So that's the only thing about the KuCoin market just now. I would imagine liquidity will be better. Um, but if you look at um, J8T as well, um, they tend to jump as well. So it could be in for a, another jump soon as well. It might be worth looking at that, but it'd just be a small amount you could get because of the liquidity. UTK, UTK is jumping as well. That's one of the ones we were talking about um, over the last couple of days. So over the last three days, it's kind of went up in price. It was down to about 194. It's gone up to 209 just now. So that's gone up 9%. Where is Seoul? Have a look at Seoul as well. That's coming out with the mainnet. Um, should be in the next couple of days. 817 Satoshi. That's doing well at the moment. So I would imagine that's going to jump up further. It's only 3 million market capitalization or less than that because of the Bitcoin price now. So Phantasma. 3.7 million market capitalization. Um, obviously with the Bitcoin price coming down, that market capitalization will go down as well. Okay, B, good stream. Thanks, Steve. Have a safe weekend, everyone. You as well, B. Thank you for joining, as usual. Have a brown weekend. Mervyn Skidmore, it's only money. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. Um, Mervyn Skidmore, RCN dropping. Do I DCA or let it hit the stop loss? Um, no, if you've got a profit, what, it depends what price you got in it. We'll just have a quick look at RCN. RCN, BTC. Obviously, this is one of the inflated ones. It uh, depends what price you got in it. Um, hopefully you didn't buy at the high. Hopefully you didn't buy um, up here. 
And depends if you're in it for the long term, uh, if you really believe in it, then it could go high. But this is one of the ones that's been inflated because of the Tika Tiwari um, kind of calls this had. Um, for me, um, I, I don't know, I'll probably get out if I'm being honest. It'd be a really difficult one. I'd look at uh, the 15 minute chart. Yeah, I probably got out in about 535. And just look at the short term. If you're, if you're really struggling for an exit price or a, an entry price, look at the, the very short term, 15 minute or even a five minute, but look at the 15 minute and see what price to get out. It should have been 535, and that would give you an indication. Um, but it could bounce from here. I don't think so. It looks as like if it's going to go down um, from here, to be honest. So your stop loss, I don't know what your stop loss is. Um, stop loss is 516. Where are we? Oh, you, you bought at 5.16. Right. Um, so 10%, 5.16, post 70. I would imagine you're coming up for the stop loss then. Well, in for a penny, in for a pound. You've got it in just now. You bought at 5.16. It's gone down. Your stop loss, I would imagine, is probably about 4.70. Um, it looks as if it's going to hit that. I'll probably wait and see if it has it because you're in, you're in it just now. It's gone down, and um, that much just now. So I would kind of wait and see if your stop loss is going to be hit. It might bounce from here. You're down six percent at the moment. I don't know where you put your stop loss at. I would imagine around about four seventy or something. Maybe eight percent. It looks like it's going to go down, to be honest. So you might as well wait until your stop loss hits. And um, depends what your stop loss is. Stop at eight minus eight percent. So yeah, about 470, 516, 475, uh, just, just wait. You might get very lucky and it bounces from here, but you're nearly hitting the stop loss already, unfortunately. Well, I hope it goes well, um, Mervyn. I hope it goes well for you, that um, kind of trade. What I wouldn't do, and it might kind of bounce back up, what I wouldn't do is kind of move your stop loss down further because you could go all the way, it could come all the way back down. So I wouldn't move your stop loss down further, so just wait until your stop loss is set. I would imagine it's something like 475 or something. Um, hopefully it might bounce for you from here, but good luck with that anyway. Okay, I'm going to leave it there just now. Have a brilliant weekend, whatever you're doing. And remember, Bitcoin is for the long term. And I think there's a lot of um, kind of underlying issues kind of with, with the world economy that's going to be well, it's going to do well for Bitcoin as well. Um, so we need to wait and see what happens with that. But um, have a brilliant weekend, whatever you're doing. Until Monday, namaste. Take care. Bye now. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. They push the human race forward. While some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do.